It's time for the Dane by Local podcast, Let's Get Local. Each month, we'll feature DBL members and hear their stories. So let's jump in to our next episode. Welcome back to another edition of Let's Get Local for Dane by Local. I'm Jason Hafman, your host, I'm the outreach manager at Project Home, but also a Dane by Local board member, and happy to bring you these podcasts again in 2020. We're really glad to be back at it. And in January, we're joined by Dr. Joe here at Limitless Chiropractic. Dr. Joe, thanks for taking some time to sit down and tell us a little bit about yourself today. Oh, happy to do it, man. I mean, anytime that I get to get on a, a, any platform, <laughs> I'm for it. So I'm super excited, super happy to talk with everyone. Well, I, I know you're a talkative guy. I just had uh, an appointment with you and an adjustment for you, my first time coming here. Um, and so I got to experience what you do. So tell us a little bit about your business and why you got into chiropractic in the first place. Okay, so a little bit about Limitless Chiropractic, and we'll start with just the name itself. So to me, uh, you know, the mind is limitless, right? So, and, and our, that's in our beliefs and everything. So um, I believe that I can help just about everybody. Now, it's maybe not true, but in my, my personal belief that I'm going to do my best for each and every person that comes through my door to give you my utmost attention, to listen to you, and to try to figure out if either I can help you or at least I can point you in the right direction that someone else can help you, right? So um, that's part of the name behind Limitless Chiropractic, right? It's not so much that I can fix everything, but it's more or less that I'm going to help find you, find the path that you're trying to get down, right? So, um, and then a little bit about chiropractic. Uh, so when I was 23, I had a significant injury. Uh, it was a work injury. And, you know, I was kind of feeling like He-Man, thought I could just walk it off. <laughs> Didn't work for me. Um, I got about two weeks into this injury and I was having a real hard time just moving my legs. And so my walking was completely off. And mind you, I was very in shape and I was this big, rough and tough 23 year old, right? Which we've all <laughs> been there. Um, so needless to say, this this injury, this work injury was a slip and fall and my low back started hurting and it was a minor pain and I just kind of took some stuff for it, got through the weeks and then two weeks comes around and the walking thing started. I'm like, okay, this is significant. I gotta go somewhere. I gotta figure out what to do. And a friend of mine taught me or told me about chiropractic and he said, hey, you know what? Go check out a chiropractor. My first response was, ah, chiropractic's for old people. My back's totally fine. I don't need that. Um, he explained a little bit better to me why I should go. And he said, if it doesn't work for you, I'll pay that bill and I'll pay your deductible or whatever it is at the medical doctor. So win-win for me, right? So I'm definitely going to go. I check out a chiropractor, um, Dr. Dan Lyons, awesome, huge influence in my life. Taught me about, uh, told me what I need to know about chiropractic, why it was going to help in very brief, you know, one hour session. And then you know, uh, we started the treatment plan and two weeks later I was almost a hundred percent better. And, and mind you, it doesn't usually work that fast, but, uh, it worked that fast for me for that time. And so ever since then, I've, I've been a complete believer in it and I've stuck with it as a patient. And then later in life, I decided why not become a chiropractor, influence people the way he influenced me. Well, and at 23, your body responds a little quicker, right? Then, oh, for uh, so you're a little bit older, right? For sure, yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, if we could all be 23 forever, that would be great. But yeah, the younger you are, the better the response is typically uh, the, is typically the way it goes. Yeah, so I mean, when you talk about that two-week turnaround, uh, you were 23. Let's keep that in mind. Yeah, right? yeah. 23, young, still <laughs> developing. Things are, you know, almost they're full-grown, but they can respond and they can repair yeah. a lot faster. So you, you've then, I mean, that made you uh, a really strong believer in the, the, the field of chiropractic. Yep. And I mean, to the point where now you're doing it on your own. How long have you been a chiropractor? So I've been a chiropractor for three years. I graduated in 2017. Uh, so I was kind of a, a late bloomer. This is a second career for me. I didn't, I wasn't always a chiropractor. I worked on cars as my first career. So okay. um, some people were kind of baffled by that. That's like, a side note for you. If you had a little side, <laughs> need some mechanic repair and you want to pull pull an arm here or a leg. And That's see. right. And, and, okay. and, and those things are very much alike. And you think about it in a certain sense, right? So you have cars, you have all these parts and they're moving and they wear out and you got to figure out what, why did this part wear out? You know, can I replace just the part or do I have to do other things to make that part not wear out? Very similar to chiropractic. So to me, the way I learned the best was I spent everything to cars, right? So you come into me with back pain and not only am I going to focus on just that one area, but I need to look at the whole thing and figure out why is this one area wearing out faster than everything else? Why isn't this area responding like all the other areas? And so basically what I'm going to do is assess you, adjust you, and try to balance your spine and your body so that not only one area wears out, but everything can wear out evenly. And so you can, you know, hopefully not endure pain and suffering or, or whatever it is you, it may be that you're coming to see me for. So when you looked at, at the field of getting into chiropractic, um, what challenges, what things did you encounter along the way? Because in a, a lot of times we've talked to different people, different business owners and members about their journeys and why they 
are where they are, why they, why they have their own business, why that was so important to them. Um, I want to know the why for you, but I also, as we tell that story, I also want to know about some of the hurdles you had to overcome because mm-hmm. it's not always easy, right, to get to this point, to have your own business and mm-hmm. make that happen. Right. No, and it's uh, it's it's a huge challenge, and every day is, is more challenging than the next. And it seems that every time you have a victory, you know, you got to saddle up and you got to get back on the horse again because there's another challenge ahead of you. Um, but, you know, some of the ups and downs I had was just, first off, making the decision to be a chiropractor. You know, For me, it influenced me the most of my life, and it made me happy. And if I could influence someone else that way, or if I could help that person live a better life, to me, that was ultimately super gratifying. And when I see people get better, and when I see people come in happy and happy to see me, I mean, I get this feeling inside that is just undescribable, and it drives me. And that's what pushes me to be better the next day than I was the previous day. So I finally made this decision to let's do this. It's going to take six years of school um, to be a chiropractor. And, you know, I thought, well, maybe I'll just do that. And then I'll, I'll know everything and it'll just all fall into place for me. Right. <laughs> so uh, very happy that I went through the school, got up, you know, got over all the hurdles, um, you know, went around everything I had to go around to to get through school. And then getting out of school, I realized that it's not all puppy dogs and rainbows. I mean, people aren't just going to flock to you because you have a, a couple degrees, right? Um, everybody that wants to hire you is, is looking to kind of lowball you sometimes, or they want to get you in and they're going to show you a lot of the ropes. But with chiropractic, it's a contract-based business. So me to sign on with another clinic would ultimately lock me out of Madison in most scenarios, not always, but most scenarios. Um, and for my, uh, during my course of my life, I always wanted to own my own business. I felt like, you know, I wish the work that I do today will show tomorrow and it's because of me and that I have no ceiling, you know, and I, that's why I like to think is no ceiling. There's no, there's no limit to how high I can soar. And so when I work for somebody, I feel like that limit's set. I, I can't be greater than that business owner in my mind, right? That may not be true for everyone, but in my mind, I can get right below the business owner and then that's where I sit. And so the big decision was, you know what, I think I'm just going to go out on a limb, I'm going to open my own practice, and I'm going to try to soar as high as I can soar. And so here we are, uh, all the ups and downs and all the people that said that it, it's not the right decision and, you know, numbers don't look right and this and that, they can't measure drive. So um, my drive is unstoppable, and I'm, I'm willing to do anything it takes to be successful in business. That's great. And the mission obviously drives you uh, of, of helping people, and that's what you talked about before, too. And that's that's one thing I find too in, in my work is like, you know, there's, there are struggles, there are things that happen, um, and some of those tough days and things like that. But, uh, the mission can keep pushing you forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, that's how you get to the, the end goal that you want to get to. Right. And, and in, I'm sure just like in your case, you're constantly reminded when someone comes up to you and they give you this huge hug or they're in tears because they're so joyful that you've helped them. Uh, and you know, for me, I like to help everybody with every ailment and you definitely don't need to have a problem <laughs> to see a chiropractor. Please note that. Um, but people that come to me that can barely walk or that have debilitating symptoms and I see them turn around, it is the most satisfying thing that I've ever experienced in life. I mean, I love that. Like, you know, I love my wife and, you know, we have a great relationship. So if I can mimic that and I feel that and I can do that forever and it, it, that love spreads in the world, I am all for it. Now you bring up your family, your wife. So, so tell us a little bit about it. I mean, it's not just Dr. Joe here, right? <laughs> That's right. There's more behind yes, the guys. So to tell us a little bit about who you are as a person, a family. Right? Yes, there is a strong woman standing by, by my side, <laughs> not behind me, not in front of me, but we are a team effort. And we, we met six and a half years ago. Um, we were acquaintances before that. And so we were, had the same friends, same friend group. And on a whim, we just started talking when we were both single at the time. And so we, we actually felt like we became friends before we even, you know, started dating. Uh, it turned out we had a lot more in common than we thought, and, and we like a lot of the same things. Um, and so now we just got married last year, and, I mean, this, this her name's Brianna, uh, and she is just amazing, and she has pushed me. Every time that I wanted to give up or I was like, you know what, let's just let's take the easy road. Maybe I wasn't meant to do this or, you know, because we all have those days. She's the the one propping me up and saying, you know what, you got this. I've I've seen you do harder things, you know. So yeah, she's a great great woman. Um, she's a special ed teacher, so she has extreme patience. So yeah. maybe that's part of uh, my my lucky success is her patience is is driving me and, and holding me up. I think that's for everybody that's successful. You've got somebody strong there with you to back you up in those tough days and tough times and keep you. Uh, reaching for your best. Mm-hmm. So that's that's great. Um, I want to go back real quick to what you said just before about seeing someone from an extremely difficult position physically rebound. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I've, I've talked to other chiropractors in the past and tell me if you view it this way or if it's a little bit different, but they've said really what they're trying to do in the work of, of being a chiropractor is allow the body to function the way it should allow the body to, to kind of work on the things that are troubling the body on its own, allow those natural um, systems mm-hmm. to do be their best, right? Yep. So do you view it that way too, or is there a little more to it than that? Nope, that's, a, you know, chiropractic is very simple. And a lot of people with all the technology we have today, it, things sometimes get overthought or we have to keep adding, keep adding, keep adding. Well, the reality of it is, is your immune system and the way your body responds is, is just crazy. Nothing like it in the world, in my opinion. Um, and that's the reason why we have some of the symptoms we have today. So for instance, um, if you sit all day for your job, your body's gonna respond to that. And it responds inappropriately, but it's trying to adapt to the environment you're putting it in. So certain muscles are shortened. And in that time that they're shortened for six, seven, eight hours a day, they start to get over, overly tight. And then the other ones that are lengthened, which is their uh, counterparts, become longer. So now you have this imbalance where you have um, two muscles, if they were on like a pulley, and, and the, every, they start in the middle, and then as one gets stronger, it's starting to pull itself down and you have this chain effect. And so as you walk, these muscles are still trying to do that, but they're adapting, adapting. So you have these uh, improper ways to adapt, right? Because we're not going to sit all day. We shouldn't sit all day. It's just that we were, we're meant to be upright. But that's where we get all these crazy things. So yeah, for me as a chiropractor, all we're doing is we're trying to harness the body's power and it's really up to the body to respond appropriately, right? So I can put the motion in your spine. I can help it move better today in this moment, but the next 24 to 48 hours, as you move around, that stuff's going to keep resetting and it's going to fall right into place. Now, if you, you just sit all day, I mean, we can only get so far. So, you know, chiropractic can help with a lot of things, but it is, um, it's not a passive treatment it is an active treatment there as a patient, you, there is going to be some expectations that, you have to do some exercises, you have to do some stretches, you have to change some of your habits to get to your goals. Chiropractic's very simple. It's it's nothing to overthink. It's in my mind, is nothing more than just balancing the body in a 50-50 state or, you know, um, in a state that everything's balanced, you know. Well, there's so much that goes up through our spine, right? Or down through our spine, I should say, from our brain to the rest of our body, right? So allowing that to function properly, isn't that I mean, that's the ultimate way to allow the body to do what it should do. Right. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, uh, so, yeah, we're, we're, I'm affecting the outside structures, but those structures do go deeper than just, you know, um, movement and stuff like that. It, it does go to the way we think and, and the chemicals that are released in our brain during adjustment and post-adjustment, you know. Think of some people that are in nothing but pain and they're dulling those senses all day. You're, you're kind of wearing some of these systems out because there's an alarm going off. You're just covering it up and covering it up, but you're not actually changing anything. And on top of that, it's going to run you down psychologically, and all that stuff's going to play a part. Now, outside of uh, chiropractic, I know you are involved in some other things, and you and I met actually through that process, right? Mm -hmm. You helped out and you volunteered on one of the Project Home houses that we were working on um, for our annual paint-a-thon, and that was great. Um, wasn't that through the Northside Business Association? Yes, it was. So, okay. yep. So it was through the Northside Business Association. So, uh, you know, being a new business owner, I know I have to get out there and try to meet new people and what better way than to meet some of the small business owners in the community. So yeah, joining the Northside Business Association was, was huge. Also part of being a uh, part of Dane by Local. Another huge thing to kind of get my name and my recognition out there. I don't do traditional advertising. I kind of do, uh, old school advertising where it's walk and talk and pound the pavement. So it seemed right and fitting to to become part of both of those um, organizations. And then, yeah, every time when something up comes up for like Project Home or anything that I get an email about volunteering, I'm always for it. And I try to make time to, to give back to the community, you know, kind of like a, a thank you for um, everything that's come my way in life for whatever the power may be, but it's just me giving back. And you can say you're part of the NBA, which is pretty yes, cool, Yes, right? that is pretty I mean, cool, yeah. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> and it sounds pretty impressive when you tell people, especially right. people that don't know about it. <laughs> but to, to really go back to that, though, the Northside Business Association, some great people I've met through there there as well, um, not just with Project Home, but Dane by Local. I mean, it's, it's a wonderful group to be involved in. And they really are just kind of all uh, similar to Dane by Local, just really trying to help each other be better and help each other be more visible. Um, you talked about the the way you haven't done, maybe spent a lot of money on different advertising or tried these different things, but really just tried to get out and, and be present in mm-hmm. front of people. When you're in your position as a chiropractor, as a doctor, as, as a person that someone is is putting their body in, you know, their, their faith into being a patient of, uh, their trust into, 
don't you feel like that is the best way to connect with individuals or prospect pa- patients to say, hey, I'm right here. I'm just a normal person. Yeah, I'm a chiropractor, but let's have a conversation and you can build that trust and rapport. And then that can really lead into this lifetime relationship. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And that, that builds a lifetime patient. And that's what I really want. You know, I am all for helping someone that wants to come in one time, but ultimately I hope that I can help them more and more and help them through life. Um, and it is, you know, a feeling, right? So when you go and you, you make the decision to spend your money on whatever it may be, an object, a service or whatnot, you have to have a, an association with a happy feeling, right? We're not going out and giving our money to people that don't make us feel good. We're not, you know, if I go in and get my oil changed and the guy is very rude to me, I'm not going to return. Be, <laughs> and all he has to do is smile and say my name once and I'm on board, right? So yeah, that's kind of something that I learned um, as an associate chiropractor. I worked one year in, in Cross Plains, side note. Uh, but that uh, that doctor, Dr. Fight, showed me that, you know, this is a customer service-based business. When you go places, don't put on a facade. Don't be someone different. Be yourself. And, and that's going to draw people to you and then ultimately care. Look them in the eye and show them that you're giving them 110% of your attention and not, you know, wandering off. So, yeah, I want to um, – part of that not traditional advertising is to, you know, have that good feeling when someone thinks of me. And, and even if I – you know, not every appointment's perfect. Even if I do something wrong, they know that I tried my best um, and that we're going to manage it. We'll both get through it together. But, yeah, ultimately uh, I want to create that happy feeling of that, hey, man, this guy cares. He took care of me. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, that was my experience. I mean, we talked a lot. Uh, you asked very important questions of me, asked if I was comfortable with everything. I mean, it was a very easy situation to be a patient with you, and I can attest to that. So there's my plug for, uh, for Dr. Appreciate Joe. appreciate that. Yeah, and Limitless. <laughs> but um, I, I just wonder, too, as, as you go forward, what are you thinking for the future? You said, you know, just a couple of years as a chiropractor now. What do you see? I mean, you're in your late 30s, mm-hmm. building this business. Um, what do you see five years down the road? Yeah. I mean, five years down the road, I I love this office building. It's a great location. I'm not going to, I'm probably not going to get out of the North side now that I've kind of put my roots down here. I don't want to, uh, have to put roots down other places, but my ultimate goal is to build myself as big as some of these other big guys and then try to tweak the, the profession a little bit for some of these bigger clinics so that they have to follow me and I don't have to follow them. And keep the keep the personal connection oh, yes. and the patient. Yep. Care. And, and so that would be doctor to doctor. So yeah, ultimately yeah. I do want to hire other chiropractors. I want to have a you know multi doctor clinic and multi person front office. Um, but at the same time, I want I don't want to disconnect and and not have it personal personal personable. Um, so as long as we don't lose that happy feeling, I, the sky's the limit. I want to get a, as big as possible in the area. I don't have any desire to ever leave the area. Um, so I won't, I don't feel like expanding into other cities. I've, I want to have it. So if someone wants to see me or anyone else, uh, any of the other future doctors that might work at the clinic, that they're willing to drive two or three hours, that would be the hugest compliment in the world to me is if someone were to drive three hours for an adjustment, you know, because they find it that important. Hmm. Big goals from Dr. Joe <laughs> right here. That, that's how you get places, right? Um, I do have, okay, we have to get this in now. I almost forgot about this. We do have a little segment on these podcasts where we ask you some quick hitting questions. We just want your gut reaction, okay. quick answer. And it's all with a local idea or local theme. So I want you to think about local businesses, local nonprofits only. All right. Name me a restaurant that you enjoy. Uh, Bear and Bottle. Okay. What about, do you, do you like coffee? I do love coffee. All right. So what about a coffee place or tea establishment? Uh, cool Beans. Cool Beans. Nice. I haven't heard that one yet. No one said that one yet. That's good. Um, how about a view or sight? Ooh. Uh, I can't remember the park, but it's where they put up all the lights in Madison. Um, it's kind of off John Nolan Drive. If you go to the tip of that and you look over where the water is, you can see the perfect view of the terrace and the Capitol. Me and my wife got married at the terrace, so it's special to oh, us. Oh, nice. Beautiful. Yeah, it's a great location. Um, and we they just got through having the lights there for such a long time. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of fun. How, this is kind of an interesting one. What's your favorite street name? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Wow. Um, Glacier Hill Drive. And that's because that's that's where I live. That's where <laughs> I bought my first house in Madison. So uh, I've, this has been a long time dream to actually purchase a home in Madison. And so doing that a year ago, just over a year ago, has, has been huge. So I'd be a fool to, to not say that. <laughs> that's your first home. It's a great place to Great place to be and a great place to name. What about, are you, so you're a sports guy? I am. Okay, this one gets a little bit off, but what's your favorite sport? Football. Football, okay, all right. And we're a little disappointed after last week. We are, but that's okay. They, still they still were, a good season. They were above our expectations out yeah. the gate, and people doubted them the whole time, and they still top four. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
good season next year for the Packers. And then one other thing, what is your uh, what's a nonprofit you you really enjoy here in the Madison area? I'd have to say Project Home. Oh man. Yeah. That was I, not planted <laughs> or planned at all because there are a lot of great ones, and I know you work with other ones too. Tell us about some of the other uh, – because you volunteer with us, but what, what else have you done here in the community base to give back and do more things um, to assist some of the, the community groups? Mm -hmm. um, and so one, it's blanking me right now, and I know they have a big event coming up called Feed the Need. Um, they're uh, – the River oh, Food so, Pantry. Yeah, River, yeah, yeah, River Food Pantry, the river. So um, – you know, I know Charles, he works in the same building as me. We've had conversations back and forth, and he's a great guy. And so I love working with them all that I can. Now, I haven't gotten to work with them as much as I want to. Um, but in the future, it's, that's something that we're definitely going to try to, um, you know, look look forward to focus our attention on. And also any nonprofit that does stuff with schools. So um, my wife is a high school teacher at Madison East. So anytime we can help kids in need, that's it's kind of the ultimate goal for us is, is giving back, but especially giving back to kids. It's no fault of their own in situations that they're put in. And so if there's anything we can do to help, we're definitely there for them. Yeah, a lot of great causes. And I know, I mean, just as speaking from the nonprofit side, you and, and people like you are the kind of folks we're looking for, you know, good people that are there for the right reasons. And, and obviously there's some benefit for all of us in those scenarios, but we really mm -hmm. appreciate it. So yeah, happy to be a part of it. Like Thanks I said, I that. can't wait to uh, <laughs> have the business take off a little bit and then I can give up some more of my time. <laughs> um, one last thing before we go, when you, when you look back at your life from, from this point, um, how do you feel about where you are today? I feel perfect. I feel like, uh, you know, we all have our ups and our downs and it's in our down moments that that really creates our character and, and who we are and and pushes us to go further right if we were all handed everything then it wouldn't be that fun so i'm thankful for everything that stood in my way and i'm thankful for all the people that said i couldn't be a chiropractor all the people that said i shouldn't own my own business i thank all those people because i welcome that as a challenge and that's kind of the fuel on the fire for me you know i think about stuff like that that pushes me to be greater a challenge tackler. That's what I'm going to call Dr. <laughs> Joe here. Uh, thanks so much for your time. Tell us a little bit about you, Limitless Chiropractic, and uh, being involved in Dane by Local. We're glad to have you involved. So oh, thanks for your time, Dr. Joe. Awesome to be a part of it. Can't wait to do another one. Thank you for checking out Dane by Local's new podcast, Let's Get Local, available on YouTube, Facebook, and DBL's website. Join us next month for more local talk.